Today we're gonna to talk about 10 of some of the most hated video game characters. Any really great story needs a good villain, and while there are plenty of sympathetic or understandable bad guys out there, these guys generally aren't. They either go way too far or are just plain despicable. So let's get started off with Micah from Red Dead Redemption 2. Rockstar really knows how to make a character that you can love to hate. You know, Officer Tenpenny, Big Smoke are pretty bad, but they're still weirdly likable in some ways. Micah is not one of them. He's just a miserable little snake that spends the entire game being pointlessly hostile to Arthur Morgan. You sure about this, Micah? Mr. Morgan, I never thought I would be so pleased to see your face. He's selfish, he's randomly almost cartoonishly violent and obnoxious. He's just an all around odious character that's more of an annoyance for most of the game than a serious threat. He's really like dirty, gross, cowboy bad guy 101. And now as the game goes on and the leader of the gang, Dutch, becomes increasingly unhinged, Arthur tries to pull him back from the brink, but Micah just keeps enabling Dutch's paranoid fantasies, even though he's ultimately the one that ratted the gang out to the authorities in the first place. Now, when you finally get to kill this two-faced coward at the end of the game, it's one of the most satisfying moments in the game. Like, even if it's at the start of John Marston's downfall, it was still good. Next over at number nine, most Metal Gear Solid villains have some kind of sympathetic ulterior motive for what they do. You know, Liquid Snake wanted to help the Genome Soldier and a bunch of other issues. Solidus wanted to free the world from the Patriots' control, but Volgan has no such ambitions, man. He, he, I mean, he wanted to advance the Soviet Union's place in the world, but otherwise, he's mostly just like this cruel, sadistic lunatic that really revels in the suffering of others. The role of the sympathetic villain in this case goes to the boss, of course, if he played the game. You know, her motivations only become more clear during the ending, but Volgan doesn't get any explanation. He's just like a paranoid jerk. He tortures Eva for his own pleasure. He beats a man to death by punching and kicking the character Granin in a drum can. And in one of the most sickening sequences in the whole series, he beats snake within an inch of his life like a tense torture sequence follows where he instructs the boss to cut out snake's eye and the whole sequence of events leads to snake getting blinded in one eye by a stray bullet Series creator Hideo Kojima loves to put his protagonist through the ringer, but no character gets it as bad as Naked Snake, and that's mostly at the hands of Volgan, this bully, this completely hateable dude in the series. Next over at number eight, look, a lot of people love Sephiroth, but just as many people hate him. As a villain, he's pretty damn cool, especially back in the 90s when like being that brooding leather jacket psycho was kind of in the style at the time. Now for most of the game, he's just a mysterious and sinister presence, but not anything particularly hateable. Hell, it's almost like there are more hateable bad guys in this game and all of Final Fantasy. But you know where this is going. You know, Aerith is one of the main party members and a fan favorite. You know, she has a positive attitude and a spunky personality that made her an easy character to like. So the tragic moment where Sephiroth appears out of nowhere and kills her, of course, remains one of the most shocking events in any video game ever. It wouldn't be that big of a deal if she came back or you could revive her somehow, but nope, there is nothing you can do. If she was one of your mains, you know, like your main party member, then you were basically screwed. She's gone forever, you gotta replace her. RPGs rarely, if ever, kill a party member for real. And when they do, they're usually temporary or just in games where, you know, you can cycle your party members constantly anyway. Final Fantasy VII wasn't like that. Aerith was there from the beginning and when Sephiroth kills her, she's gone for good. And it was more painful if you were a 10 year old like me and you had a crush on her. That single act made Sephiroth a video game bad guy legend and one of the most hated antagonists of all time. Next over at number seven, let's take a hard shift from like JRPG mega awesome bad guys uh, to a more hateable, different rock star character. Roy Earl is one of your primary partners in LA Noir. You know, he, he's your man during Cole Phelps's brief stint on the Vice desk where he acts like this huge dick the entire time while also being extremely crooked. Now, by the end of the game, you find out that he's closely associated with the entire urban redevelopment fund conspiracy and is basically the enforcer for like protecting 
all the people involved in this grift. Cole tries to expose it all, but is eventually killed pursuing a serial killer who is a key part of the whole thing. Now, the game ends in an appropriately noir way with Roy Earl, the man who tried to ruin Cole's life and who's basically responsible for his death, gives a eulogy at his funeral while all the corrupt officials who wanted to bury Cole's investigation stand in applause. Now, unlike Micah from Red Dead, who at least gets a bullet for all his hateable behavior, Roy Earl gets away with it. He gets away scot-free, and he doesn't really get much more hateable than that. Next over at number 6, the Dragon Age games have plenty of monsters and jerks and lunatics running around, but the most hateable in this series has got to be this dude, Arl Rendon Howe. Played with the perfect amount of dismissive like smugness by the absolute freaking legend Tim Curry, Arl Howe is, is basically the underling of Loghain, you know, the, the primary antagonist here. But while Loghain has an understandable reason for doing what he's doing, Arl Howe is just a power-hungry and duplicitous this coward. You get to see the worst of him if you choose to play the human noble origin where he acts like a friend of your father's, but the moment he's gone, Arlhau just turns into a traitor. His men slaughter your family and your entire staff, which sickeningly includes children. So that alone makes him pretty hateable. It takes a long, long time before you can finally get your revenge on this dude, but man, is it sweet when it finally happens. The only downside is that you, you can't make it worse. Like hacking this guy to death with a sword just isn't enough for some people. Make a spit on you. I deserved more. Over at number five, yeah, let's talk Tony Hawk's Underground. In comparison to everyone else on this list, Eric Sparrow's crimes are pretty tame, you know? He's not killing anyone, you know, at least not intentionally. He's just an obnoxious kid who eventually gets jealous of you, your character's success. He's this constant annoyance for pretty much the whole game, but the thing that really turns this from like a kind of an annoying sidekick into a true asshole is when he changes the tape of your most impressive stunt to make it look like it's something that he did. Oh, I still get mad at this one. Your character is the one that actually managed to do this sick thing where you jump over a helicopter in a level, but Eric takes all the credit because he was there. Like I said, in comparison, it's not so bad, but I think what makes Eric Sparrow so uniquely hateable is how relatable he is. You know, we've all known a kid like this at one time or another, the little twerp that constantly gets into trouble and wants you to bail him out, the kid that talks you into doing dumb stuff and then blames you for it when your parents find out. You know that kind of thing. It's a type of person you don't see too often in games, and while Thug is anything but realistic, Eric is a type of person we've all had to deal with, and that's just what makes him really hateable. Next over at number four, let's talk Dark Souls. Now, like Sephiroth, the thing that really makes Lautrec here so hateable is less what he says and more just what he does. The Souls games have their fair share of nasty characters, you know? But a lot of them have some weird quirks to them. Lautrec, though, this dude just sucks. It's a little suspicious when you find him locked up in a jail cell, but talking to him makes him seem all right. I mean, like, he's not any crazier than anyone else in these games, so you trust him. But that is a huge mistake. The earlier Souls games like Demon Souls and Dark Souls try to pull a few bullshit tricks on you, and this one is the nastiest. You got the option of leaving him alone or freeing him from the cell, but it doesn't actually matter. He gets out either way. He eventually starts hanging out at the Firelink Shrine, and he seems like just another NPC, but if you get far enough in the game, then when you get back to the Firelink Shrine, you'll find the entire place dark and the bonfire becomes unusable. Now, Latrec killed the Firekeeper, Anastasia, and because of that, you can't use the most important save point in the game. Like the Firelink Shrine is basically like that whole central hub. It's like a key location in the game and this guy ruined it. It's possible to get your revenge and restore the Firelink Shrine, but it's such a pain in the ass that it's probably better to just kill this guy the second you see him. The Firelink Shrine is one of the few safe havens you have in this game and this guy takes it away from you. So we hate him for that. Next over at number three, let's talk Kamoshida. The first primary antagonist of Persona 5, you know, is a lot to say about him. Honestly, the Persona fan wiki describes him pretty much perfectly, saying that, and I quote, Kamashita is a lustful, vain, 
cruel, and utterly selfish bully, which, yeah, yeah, that covers it. He's a former professional athlete and the coach of the school's volleyball team, which in any normal story would make this guy barely worth thinking about. The problem is, is that you play as a high school student. Anyone who's done school sports has probably met someone kind of like this guy. You know, sometimes a total jerk that like peaked early in life and takes it out on everyone around them. That's only the half of it though. What really makes this guy hateable is what he does in this game. He seeks out relationship with his female students. He abuses his male students with torturous training regimens and is for all intents and purposes a full-blown predator in the worst possible ways. And on top of all that, he's protected by the principal and the students are afraid to speak out about him in fear of reprisal. When you finally manage to expose his crimes to the world though, it is so satisfying. This guy is so bad that it makes every other villain in Persona 5 seem like kind of a letdown in comparison because he's just that hateable. Now over at number two, we're gonna go a little old school for this one. I mean, okay, Suedekin 2 actually came out a few years after Final Fantasy VII, but it sure looks older, right? Now, this classic RPG starts off hot by introducing one of the most hateable villains of all time, this dude called Luca Blight. I mean, of course he's a bad guy, but his antics are legendary. The whole story starts off with him getting your entire unit killed as a pretext for his invasion of a neighboring country. That's the level we're starting at here. You were a member of his army and you still get slaughtered just because this guy wanted an excuse to invade his neighbor. He only gets worse from there though, like one of the most infamous sequences happens like a few hours into the game where Luca invades a town and kills everyone except for one person who he orders to crawl in the mud and oink like a pig. And then he kills him too, of course. He just had to humiliate him first. Ugh. At least Kafka could crack a joke once in a while and do the whole Joker thing in Final Fantasy VI, you know, before his atrocities and war crimes. Meanwhile, this guy doesn't even try to be likable. He's just nuts. Now down to number one, let's talk about Ted Farrow from Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, who else could be number one but this guy? What makes Ted Farrow so unique is that he's actually not an antagonist. He's not even a character you ever actually see. Like He's just a guy whose story is entirely told through audio logs and the computer terminals, but he's so despicable that that's all you really need to hate him. Basically, he's the guy responsible for destroying the world of Horizon. Not even once, but technically twice. He's the founder of Faro Automated Solutions, the robot manufacturer that eventually created the deadly nano swarm known as the Faro Plague that was responsible for destroying all the life on Earth here. That part, at least, you could chalk it up as kind of a mistake. You know, his short sighted greed is definitely partially responsible for bringing about this apocalypse, but it's what he did after that that makes this guy like a legendary ass. If you didn't play the game, you know, as this world was slowly being consumed by the plague and things were looking bad, a team of scientists created the Gaia system, which was meant to bring life back to a devastated world and eventually restore the old world using a massive computer database and science stuff and Apollo. And then as the world ended, Pharaoh had a mental breakdown and using his special clearance, he managed to gain access to the Gaia control system and delete the Apollo servers, essentially destroying all of humanity's combined knowledge in a single stroke because of his misguided belief that this information would somehow make the new human race less pure. Of course, another part of it was that Pharaoh wanted to cover up his past. At this point, he was completely nuts and thought that he'd become the ruler of a restored Earth. You eventually find out his ultimate fate in Horizon Forbidden West, and all I can say is uh, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Sarcasm. Anyway, those are 10 absolutely detestable villains in video games. We know there are so many others out there though, so we wanna hear from you down in the comments some of your picks. We can definitely make a follow-up to this video, so hit us up. If you enjoyed this video though and like talking games with us, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It helps us out. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell if you haven't already because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.